your personal prayer. What do you want God to know about your desires today? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Here, 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 For 
Generationally, that what had happened. Amen? Amen. So let's continue. So in the passage that we have read, let's look at a little bit deeper what God wants us to understand. In verse 7 says, says here, Soon the Samaritan woman came to draw a water. And Jesus said to her, Please, take note of that word. Please, give me a drink. Okay? He was alone in that time because the disciple who was with Jesus Christ had gone into the village to buy some food. But before this, imagine brother and sisters, you know, Samaritan, normally Jew doesn't want to go to the place where the Samaritan is. Amen? Yeah. We know the story in the Bible, right? So normally they prepared to go longer, longer uh, route rather than going to the shortcut just to avoid uh, 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 um, the place where the Samaritan peoples are because you know they cast out Samaritan right for them Samaritan is nothing something like that but take note of this Jesus Christ the rabbi the God that we know I mean if you look at by position Jesus is high correct yes. he's higher than anyone right yes. he is in the human form yes but he's higher than the human than, than anyone but he himself the one who goes intentional to that place where the Samaritan is. Take note where the Samaritan lady is. Amen? Amen. Not the government official, not anyone, but the person whom we can, don't get me wrong, but some, some kind of person that who means nothing. A person like just you and me, a normal person. Amen? Amen. So Jesus Christ, if you notice, he was there, sitting in waiting to 
the Samaritan to come out? Of course, because he's God. Right? He knows what is going to happen. Amen? Amen. But because in a human form, people cannot see that. Amen? We cannot understand what God wants. Same is true in our life. We cannot understand what God wants in our life. Amen? Amen. Whatever our situation. So let's move forward. Now, he was alone in that afternoon. Take note of this. While Jesus there waiting, taking a rest for the long run. So... The Samaritan known time. Known, right? Can you imagine in Dubai or in UAE, you go somewhere close by the well, in this temperature, 12 o'clock, right? Yeah. With Jesus Christ sitting, waiting for someone to come out. What would you feel? Very hot, right? Yeah. But why it is known? Why the Samaritan woman has to wait until noon? Why not in the morning? Why not in the evening? There is the story behind there, right? In the passage that we have read, if we look at in the verse, um, verse below verse 17 and 18, Jesus Christ was telling the Samaritan, go bring your husband. In the middle of the story, to cut the story short, he said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus knew it. He said, I know, you're telling the truth. Amen? Amen. Jesus wants us to be true to ourselves. Before yes. anyone else, before we look at other people surrounds us, Jesus says, look at your heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Why that is known? Because the Samaritan woman knows who he is, who she is behind the scene. She knows who she is, right? Amen? Amen. And then, because she doesn't want people to see her, she tried to avoid someone see her, she tried to avoid people talk about her, about her life. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. And this, in this character, if you notice, there are two, as I've said, Samaritan and Jew, which is Jesus Christ, yeah? So they have a dispute, and simply because uh, at the back of Jesus Christ, she, he needs to be there. No matter what, I know this girl, I know she is a sinner, just like you and me. I also used to, do, to live my dark life, amen? But I need to be here. Because that girl that I am waiting need me. Amen? Amen. Let's continue. It this says there, when we look at that, Jesus in this verse signified the humbleness. Jesus in this verse signified the humility. Who is Samaritan to him? Who is Samaritan woman to him? He is teacher. He is God. Right? He can demand whatever he wants. But he said, please give me a drink. That is signifying how Jesus humbled us. That is what your Jesus Christ. That is what your God. That is what our Jesus Christ. That's the reason why you are here in this place. To humble himself so that we may increase. Amen. Yeah. Increase in our spiritual life. Let's continue. It says in Matthew 23, 12. Humbleness. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And for those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is what Jesus Christ is doing to you and me. This is what Jesus Christ is doing to the Samaritan woman. Amen. Amen. He needs to go down in the level of that Samaritan woman. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Now the question is, when was the last time you think humble down yourself? To your colleagues? To the ministry so many so many ministries meeting here meeting there bible study here practice here practice here did you humble down and say yes i will do it for the glory of god amen, amen. did we ask that ourselves did we think about it when when did we humble ourselves if someone tried to talk behind your back how would you react if someone insults you in front how would you react? How would you humble yourself? Amen? Amen. Let's continue. In verse 9, it says, The woman was surprised, for you refused to have anything to do with Samaritan. She said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan. Why are you asking me for a drink? Of course, because the Samaritan knows her, her standing. To, first, her, he knows who she is in herself. Second, what is the Samaritan stand between the two? Amen? So she was surprised. 
who am I? Like, who am I to be approached by a higher person? Or I would maybe think if I am the Samaritan woman, why are you here? You already thrown us away. You come back to me and asking me a drink. What do you want me to do? If you would that Samaritan woman, how would you react? Amen. Amen. How would you react? But Samaritan woman just respect Jesus Christ. What did he say? Samaritan woman's reactions was surprised in death, but she was an actions to ignore, for sure, as I've said. But, but what she did, she did not ignore Jesus Christ. Instead, what she did, she entertained Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. She showed a respect. She responded. She entertained. She respected Jesus Christ. And she responded to Jesus Christ. As I've said earlier, if I am a Samaritan woman who are being cast out by a Jew, will I give them this kind of response? Look at ourselves in the real scenario of life now. What is happening in the UAE, in the government? What they are doing in the Africans? Is it your fault? No, right? Is it anyone's fault? No. How would you respond to the government? Amen. How would we respond in the way that we humble ourselves no matter what? Now the question is, when the last time you remember responding to the calling of Jesus Christ in your life, you are here not for nothing. You are here because Jesus Christ called you for something. The gift. Jesus Christ had the gift for you. He is calling you to have that in your life. How are you going to respond today? In the middle of your situation, in this government, in this country. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Okay. In verse 10, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, would you ask, would you ask me and I would give you a living water? Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ here was offering a gift from a God to Samaritan woman if she is willing. Okay? If you would, he said, if you would ask me, there is an option whether you will ask or no. Okay? The option is yours. Okay? They said, the Samaritan woman, if she is willing, Jesus Christ is willing to offer the living water to her. Same is true to all of us here, including myself. Okay? Jesus Christ is bringing that good news from God, from God the Father. Amen. Amen. That gift, the living water, He is ready to give it to you if you only be willing to receive it. Today is the day that Jesus Christ reminds us all, including myself. I have a gift for you. I have that living water for you. If you will make a decision for yourself to receive it, it is free. Amen. Amen. That invitation is for all of us. Not only for the Samaritan woman. How would you respond to that? Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Allow me to emphasize a little bit. And I would like you to internalize that situation. That, that, that encounter. When Jesus Christ in front of the Samaritan woman. Okay? Saying that. I am the Samaritan woman, and I was there in the world just to take a water. Suddenly, someone that I don't know, okay, I don't know his name, but by the look of him, I know that he's a Jew. And I'm telling, and he's he's telling me to, I'm gonna give you a living water if you would just ask me. This is free of charge. This is free. What will I? What would I react in that situation? Knowing that I have many things in the back of my mind, you know? Knowing that I have something that I need to fix in myself. 
Jesus Christ told me that I have five husbands, and the one that I am living right now is not my husband. Amen. Amen. How can I receive something, living water, which is almost unbelievable? What is living water to me? Amen. Amen. What I know is the water that coming from Jacob's well, which I need every day in my life. Amen. 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 But Jesus Christ is telling me, I am going to give you a living water. When you have this, you will never thirst again. Yes. How are you going to believe in that? Will you believe? Immediately? No. No. No, right? Yes. So I'm not going to believe. If I, if I don't know the person, who are you to tell me a living water? I know there is a water that I need every day in my life, but I don't know about living water. This is sin in our life. Jesus Christ comes to this world to give us a, an eternal life. But we are being, you know, um, uh, blinded with all the issues in our life. Amen. Amen. We are blinded with all the issues in our life. So many things in your back and someone tell you, I offer you um, something that you can resolve your problem. I'll give you visa. I'll give you job. I'll give you this. Oh, come on. How can you give me? How can, how can you give me? I don't even know who you are. Right? I'm already in this situation. I feel hopeless in my life. Oh, just go away from me, please. Right? But that woman didn't do that. Instead, he believed, she believed to Jesus Christ, right? She reacted, yes. What that happened? She reacted and she said, how can you give that to me? You don't have anything. You don't even have rope to go down and get me water. Because that woman is thinking about the material things. Amen? That woman is thinking about the physical things that we are getting in this world. Amen. But Jesus Christ wants to give you that living water, never drunk right. No matter what your situation, no matter you feel hopeless this time, God says, when that living water is in you, you are safe. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's continue. So this is what happened. And verse 12 and 11 and 12. The woman tried to question Jesus Christ. He said, how can you give me? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob? Because they know Jacob, right? They don't know Jesus Christ, but they know Jacob. If they would only knew that Jacob, that Jacob come from Jesus Christ, I think, yes, we are talking here in one, one side, right? But they don't know, right? And then what they say is, she doubted, yes, that's no question. She doubted. Sometimes also in our life, brother, whether we like it or not, whether you're telling yourself now, denying yourself, okay, we intended to question God. Do we agree? Yeah. We doubt the power of God in our life. Amen. Amen. In your situation right now, think about it. Without, we question our faith. Your faith is the one you make yourself through believing Jesus Christ, but you question it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And when that situation of your life that we think it's hopeless. That's okay. If you think you question Jesus Christ, His power, your faith, that is fine, brother. Remember, we are in flesh. We are not God. And we should experience these kind of things in our life. Amen? Because if we experience this, we will go draw near to our Jesus Christ. And if we go draw near to our Jesus Christ, we will experience the power of God in our life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What it says, when you experience this, when you question, that's fine. But please, God don't want us to stay into that questions. God don't want us to stay into that hopeless situation in your life. God don't want you to think about your situations. Amen. Amen. He wants you now today to believe in Him. Receive His power. Receive His living water. Because that living water that He is offering you free to His Son, Jesus Christ, will take out away from where your situation is. I don't know about your situation, brother. Don't get me wrong here. I don't condemn anyone. I myself, I have my own situation. But because I have God, which is bigger than my situation, I am good. Amen. 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 
Isaiah 5.56 says, let me just read it for you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Hallelujah. This is what God wants you to do in your life now. You might feel that your situation is not bringing you anywhere. God says, seek me while I'm closer to you. Before it's too late, call me. I am just near to you. Amen. Amen. We just have to make a decision in our life. Amen. Amen. What else? Humble down yourself before him. I've been into that situation, brother and sister. Standing before you, I used to be like doing everything on my own power, my own might, you know? I've been into that situation that I was so down. I was doing so many part-time, so many things that I think it will help me to bring me up, bring me out of my situations. But it never helps. Instead, it's bring me more down. But Jesus Christ says, Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek me. Obey me. Seek me first. Thank you, Akshay. Obey me. And everything you need will be added unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. What a promise. Brother, before I stand before you, I was in that kind of person. I was down with many situations of my life. But I hold on to God's promise. Matthew 6.33 was of my favorite in my life first. When I was so down, someone, Jesus Christ sent someone for me to receive that gift. And I bow down before him. Stop my part time. I stop anything. I seek him first in my life. I obey him no matter what. Yes, I struggle. But I praise God because that struggle bring me to strengthen my faith. Yes. That struggle pushed me and now testifying that my God is good. That is your God. That is my God. That is everyone's God here who believes in Him. Yes. Amen? Amen? Let's continue. So if things happen, good things happen to me, we are all equal in the eyes of God. I think we just have to find out the faith, the trust. How do we give it to Jesus Christ? How we work for our faith in our trust. Amen. Amen. One day we'll see you here, standing, testifying the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Let's continue. So in this verse, in this passage, and 13, it says, Jesus Christ replied after that woman's questions many anything. He replied and says, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. Jesus Christ was actually trying to connect that Samaritan woman to the waters from the well. From the well. Amen? Amen. He said, if anyone, that water that we are drinking every day will, will be thirsty again. Amen? Amen. But he says, this verse signifies what kind of water you have in your life. That water is not there in that passage for nothing. God wants us to see what is this water in us. It says to drink that water from Jacob's well will make us thirsty again. Now let's look at what is that water in that verse signifies. That water signifies your fleshly desire. That water signifies your worldly desire. What are those desires that you have in in heart right now, in mind. What desires that you have? What what kind of water that you have right now in you? That water coming from Jacob. Yeah? Jacob's well. Is it desiring of many money in your accounts? Desiring fame? I want to be like this. Desiring a good position in the company? Ouch. Desiring so much of time that I will be able to enjoy playing online games with my friends all over the world. Amen? Yeah. Who's playing games here? No, I'm joking. Okay? Desiring so many times because I'm addict in social media. I need to see my friends. Oh, what is my friends doing in Facebook? Oh, I need to post this because, you know, my friends will see it. I need to see how 
many likes, how many comments, blah, 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 blah. Brother, I'm, I'm almost there too. But uh, I thank God. Because my God, the Holy Spirit is always rebuking me. Many more, anything, anything that take up your time. Take note of this, brother. Let me your ears, please. Anything that take up your time, which is supposed to be for God. Your time to pray, your time to fellowship, your time to read the Bible, your time for a Bible study. Those are the time. They got supposed to be to God, but use for your time in your fleshly desire. Those are the water that is in you right now. Think about it. I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, I don't condemn anyone. But if you think you have that kind of water in you, question yourself. Today is the day God says, I want to give you the living water. Amen. 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 Let's continue. But at the end, brother, don't get me wrong, because we still need desires in each world. Amen. Amen. We still need it. Why? Because we still have to live in this world. But we should not forget and we should always remember this. That we have to make sure that desires, our desires, that we need for our living should be aligned to what God's desire in our life. Amen. Amen. In short, all of our desires should be our needs. All of our desires, whether is it fleshly desires, should be our needs. Amen? Amen? Not our wants. Because when we say wants, we'll never satisfy. Wants will never satisfy you. Amen? Amen. But when you say desire, when you reach to that, your requirements, you are done. Amen? Amen. I'll give you one example. If I'm in the company, and I want just to get my salary every, every month, okay? Okay, I will work I will work dedicatedly, I will work what is needs to be done for my company, honestly, honesty, and I will get my salary every month, okay? Okay, my, sal my, my company see me that I am good, they will promote me, amen? amen? And the company will give me, a, company will give me a chance, okay? I will gonna give you a chance, if you are able to do this, I will promote you. That is the desire, I will desire up to here. But when I say, I want to be a CEO of the company, okay, I will have to do more double time to do anything and everything to be in that level. But before I go there, I have to come from manager, general manager, and CEO. Amen? Amen. So I have to work double time. When I become a general manager, mm, no, I am still not that position that I want. I need to do work. I need to do more. Maybe I should also do something that, you know, for the expense of other. Maybe I will have to do something to this general manager or this CEO to be kicked out and I will be into that position. See, this is what wants us. Will not give you any satisfactions in life. Hallelujah. So we all have to be careful. We should make sure that our fleshly or worldly desire should be our needs, not our wants. Otherwise, it will bring us anywhere bring us in sin. Amen? Amen. Let's continue. Are we learning? Yes. Are we making sense? Yes. Amen. Let's continue. So now, brother and sister, Jesus Christ is reminding us. No matter what your situation is, no matter what your desire is, right at this moment, if you desire more than what you need, Jesus Christ says, I am here. I'm not going to stop loving you. I am going to patiently wait for you through my son, Jesus Christ. In fact, that's the very reason why I send my son, Jesus Christ. For you, for me. Amen? Amen. I will not stop to offer you this gift. I, this gift is ready, free for you, whenever you are ready to receive it. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. That gift is the living water that we have read in the passage. Eventually, that living water will gonna give us eternal life. Amen. Are we desiring eternal life? 
Amen. Amen. Now let's go to our keepers. Oh, that's only uh, uh, an introduction. No? I'm joking. That is part of the preaching. So now let's go. Let's go to our keepers. Let me just read it to you quickly. And then Jesus replied, If anyone knew the gift God has for you, if anyone knew, if you only knew, sorry, if you only knew the gift God has for you, Take note of this brother. Jesus Christ back then was talking to the Samaritan woman. That Samaritan woman is you and me in our time now. Amen. If you only knew what God's gift for you, he says like that. In who you are speaking to, I'm sorry, you are not speaking to Jesus. You are, I am speaking to you, but I am not Jesus Christ. That's clear. But I praise God because I, I bow down before him. I ask him, I, I, I accept him to use my mouth right now for his word to be alive in all of us, including myself. Amen. 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 Six here, and who you are speaking to, this was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ right now is speaking to you as well. Okay? You would have asked me and I would have given you a living water. Jesus Christ is offering you a living water right now. You are free to ask. As you sit down, Realize if you think you need that living water in your life, He will give you today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And 14 says, For those who drink, the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them. This is a promise. Giving them an eternal life. Ultimately, ultimate promise of Jesus Christ. Eternal life. I believe. You and me is here because we aim for an eternal life. Amen? Amen. We aim a, a, a good life. That good life which going to give us by Jesus Christ through the living water. Let's continue. Let's look at the five significant points of God's gift through the living water. Sorry, that is four significant Significance points of God's gift be, be in, based on the, 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 the passage that we have read. Amen? Amen? So let's continue. The first one is God's gift. God's gift, sorry, it's it's a typo error. It's a gift from God. Okay? That living water is a gift from God. Now, what is it something to do with us? Anyone can give us a gift, right? Yes. Anyone can give us a gift. But what it is give us for? And verse 10 says, as we have read, you can read it over there just for the sake of our time. But what I would like to emphasize here, what that gift means to us. Give is free. Or being given freely, even if we don't deserve it. Take note of that words, brother. Gift, we can receive a gift even if we don't deserve it. Someone somewhere, maybe charity, will come and give you a gift. You don't deserve it, right? But they will give you. Even if you are unlovable, they will give you. If they feel they want to give you, that is a gift, okay? In other words, no matter how messy my life or our life is, okay, we are all entitled for that God's gift that is offering to us today, the living water, who you are. Who you are, whoever you are, who do you think you are, whatever you see in your life, I don't know. It's only God knows, but you are entitled. Amen? Amen. That gift from someone who that we are entitled to receive gift from someone who loves us dearly. Take note of that. Someone who will give you gift is someone who's concerned to you. Someone maybe who loves you. Someone who has compassionate to you. That's how we can receive gift. Yeah? And this is what Jesus Christ did. This is what God, through His Son Jesus Christ, did to the Samaritan woman. Did that Samaritan woman is righteous? Based on the story? No, right? Because He is the daughters. But God says, here we are. Here I go. I'll give you a gift. This is same is true in our life. Amen. Amen. This is same truth in our life, brother. Jesus Christ, God the Father, love us so much. So much. Even if we don't deserve, we know that we don't deserve. I don't deserve. I don't deserve a gift from God. But because He loves me, I am entitled to receive that gift. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Okay.
So when remember what is God's did in ours in our life for us to understand how much God loves us, even if we don't deserve it. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but will have an eternal life. 17 says, God did not send His Son into the world to judge the world. He sent His Son to save the world through Him. This is what exactly happening in the well. This is what exactly happening in the Samaritan women in Jesus Christ. And this is exactly what us to know today. No matter who you are, you think that you are a sinner. God says, I am here. I sent my son Jesus Christ for you. In fact, Jesus Christ comes to the world not for the righteous. Amen. Amen. He comes for the sinner. And the good thing is, all of us are sinners. All of us, including me. Amen. John 3.10 says, no one is righteous. Amen. Not even one. So I acknowledge God's sovereignty in my life. Because of His love, because of His death, I am here now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Once upon a time, we are all in darkness of life. But thank God for His grace through Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now being saved. Amen. Amen. Are we saved? Yes. Yes. Are we saved? Yes. Are we righteous now? Yes. 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 Through, through the Christ. grace of God yes. and mercy of God. Amen. Amen. Whoever believes, accepted Jesus Christ, it's not it's, it's, it's not impossible to him. Everyone is entitled. Let's go to the next point. The next point is, it is a living water. Go back to It is a living water. Okay, what it says here, that is in verse 10 as well. It said, I will give you a living water. What is, I'd like you to look at that living water. What does that symbolize? What is that important gift that God wants to give to us today? We want, we need to know that. Lend me your ears, lend me your eyes, lend me your presence. The living water is symbolize our salvation. The true knowledge of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So that's come all together. That is the living water. I don't know what kind of living water you need today. Before, I am asking you, what kind of water are you taking? Was it a water from the well of Jacob? Or already the living water? Praise the Lord! Hallelujah. If it is the living water from God, praise the Lord! Right? Hallelujah. But if it is something else, but if it is other water, please question yourself. Ask yourself. Today yeah. is the day. Amen. Amen. Today is the day that God wants to give this living water to you. That living water will give you salvation. That living water will give you the truth of Jesus Christ in God. That living water will give you the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit that's going to be in you. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Re Re Revelation 21, 6 says, can we read? And he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Hallelujah! What a promise! Amen. Living water and the children of God. Do we want to be a children of God? Yes. Amen. Let's continue. And Revelation 22, 1 says, let me just read it to you. Then an angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. This is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is the living water which is coming from God and the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Jesus Christ. That, that living water, that Holy Spirit that God wants you to have it today, that is also that is in there. So you will be in one. Amen? Let's continue. Point number three. Point number three. Bear with me because
because I have to do the multi-task technical error. Okay? But let's enjoy the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So point number three, living water that won't fill you thirsty again, but make you fully satisfied. Would you like to have that water? Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I don't feel convinced. Would you like that water? Yes. Amen. I do have that water. I claim it. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Yeah, let's continue. That it shows in verse 14, verse 14, for those who, who want to drink the water, I'll give will never be thirsty again. Amen. Amen. So let's continue. That is self-explanatory. Yeah, Jesus Christ right now is asking you if you want that living water. Let's continue in point number four. Point number four is it becomes a fresh gambling stream within you. And if you look at and if you look at in that story, because the Samaritan woman experienced when they were having a conversation, of course Jesus Christ. It, it is not written in, in the Bible, but of course after that conversation, based on the passage that we have read. It says here, and as a second, because that Samaritan woman believed to Jesus Christ and willing to receive the living water, she became a living testimony. Amen. Amen. She became a living testimony in the people in their village, in their area. What had happened into that story? That lady went out. Amen. Amen. That lady lived his, her bucket there. Imagine the reason for that lady is to go and get water. But because she encountered the living water, she opened her heart to Jesus Christ. Despite of the situation in her life, despite of her being a sinner, despite of her being an adulteress, okay, she opened herself, she opened her heart to Jesus Christ and received that living water. And that living water made her testify the goodness of Jesus Christ in her life. Brother, allow me to tell you a little bit about myself. I was just like that lady before, very down. Just like almost lost everything apart from the house in the car. But because Jesus Christ loved me so much, despite of my flaws, Despite of my anything that I'm doing, all, all part-time, I don't have time to Jesus Christ. Our uh, sister in Jesus Alive community, those of all members knows, sometimes our children has to go to the church alone. That Moises that you see here, I think he was just before one year or something like that. Someone has to pick up her, uh, to pick him up in the house to bring it to the children's ministry because me and my husband, we have to go for our part-time. Okay? But... You might not be surprised, but if you were surprised, we have to go noon. It's so coincident, but I think this is what God wants to do. During the noon time, like this Friday, that was Friday weekend before, we have to drive to the Raks Al Khaimah. Silar. What is in Silar? Anyone knows? Any idea? What is in Silar? Alcohol. We in my husband. Me, the one standing in front of you before. Okay? We have to drive through. No time. Just like the Samaritan woman. Because we have to go drive that there is no police to catch us on the road. To take the alcohol. To sell it to Dubai. That was the water I was used to drink before. That was me before. Behind everything that I'm doing in my life. My children is in the children ministry and me and my husband has to drive through to Ras Al Kaima to take up a drink, to sell it to someone, to make their life horrible. Amen. Amen. But that is the truth of life. Amen. Amen. And what works, the worst thing is like, you know, then after that. We continue, we continue, knowing that we, by this means, we will have a good life. But what had happened? That water make us more thirst, thirsty. That water bring us more down. That water bring us anywhere until everything was almost lost. But because God's love is there, He has left us the house in the car. And when I was trying to meditate, when I become a Christian, that was our time before, we would become a baby Christian. When I was trying to meditate, I realized that how God loves us. 
He knows that house and the car is our needs. Amen? Amen? That is our needs. But in my mind, what I want is not only the car, not only the house. I want more. I want more money in my accounts. I need something that my children can live good life in this place. Amen? Yes. That's where I used to be before. Hallelujah. But you know what? I come to the point that I have nowhere to go. And because of God's love, someone come to us, introduce us about Jesus Christ. Tell us who is Jesus Christ. We slowly open, believe. We slowly, we listen. We believe, we hear them. He slowly knows more about Jesus Christ. And finally decided to be under Jesus Christ. That's the time we receive our living water. Amen. And when we decided to receive that living water in our life, this is what Jesus Christ did for us now. Amen. Hallelujah. He has provided everything our needs. That time when we were doing our selling liquor, we want to have a good life, we want our our children to be in the school, in the good school. You know, brother and sister, this is what God gave us. He has given us the company who is able to provide our needs. School for our children, insurance for the family, house for the family, everything for the family. And brother, you know, I was just like you before. I was just sitting there listening about the Word of God. But I am here right now in front of you telling you what the only thing I do in my life is to open my heart, to believe and put my faith in Him. And here I am. I don't do anything. Now my children is there. I don't know what's happening. But I know they are being taken care of us. Amen? Because God told me, go and do disciple. Go and, and, and feed my people. Hallelujah. Let's continue. So there, do we do we want to have that living water in us? Yeah. Hallelujah. Do we want that living water will become fresh and bubbling spring within us? Yes, we are. I experience. That is my life testimony. I'm standing in front of you. The same is true in the Samaritan woman. He left, she left his bucket. She go out. And she do the testimony. Amen. Amen. And what happened after that? In John 7, 38 says, He who believes in me, as the scripture, as scripture said, from his eternal most being, living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoever believes, take note, brother and sister. Yes, you will decide. I want that living water, Jesus Christ. I want that. I want it. But there is something that you need to do in your life. You need to believe. You need to believe not just hearing it, but from your heart. You have to open your heart to Jesus Christ and accept Him. Amen? Amen. And then you will have that living water. That living water is free. That living water is for all of us. We are all entitled. But how are we going to receive it? We need to believe. Amen? Amen. And once we receive and live our life in the living water, the Holy Spirit, okay? Those who, there is no doubt that we will have a channel of blessings to many people, especially the lost ones. Amen? And in John 4, 42 says, Then he said to the woman, Now, we believe, not just believe what you have told us, but because we have heard and we have heard him ourselves, we know that he is indeed our savior. He is indeed the savior of the world. See, when you do something, testify the goodness of God in your life, someone will come back to Jesus Christ. Amen. You will be a blessing. You will be a um, uh, bubbling spring uh, water. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Now, we have a four points there, as what we, we see earlier. The gift, the living water, the water that will never give you thirst, but will, will fulfill you. And what else? You will be a life testimony to the others. Can we get it without doing anything? Can we get it without doing anything? No. Because in our application says, this is the application. 
First, before we go to the application, I would like to ask you one more question. Do we want that living water? Yes. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Believe it. Open your heart. Hallelujah. What it says here, when you want the living water, then you have to repent and turn back to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Surrender your life to Jesus. Make him, him as your Lord, your God, and Savior of your life. No one else. No part-time. Not the part-time. Not something else somewhere there by through your friends. Not, not the games in the whatever it is, in the social media. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Make Him as Lord, as your Lord, your God, and your Savior. It says, if you look at here, what this Samaritan woman did when they, during their conversation, Jesus says, bring your husband. And what is the Samaritan did in, his, in, in her life? I don't have husband. She did not tell the, the, the she did not, not tell lie. Instead, she told the truth. She was, thank you, brother. She opened her life to Jesus Christ. Today is the day. Jesus Christ wants to know you more. He knows you. No, Jesus Christ knows every one of us here. Amen? Amen? But He wants you to confess. He wants you to tell yourself in front of Him, Lord, I am a sinner. I want that living water to, to help me come out where I am right now. Amen? Amen. It says here, and, and, and if you look at in that, in that uh, conversation between them, we know that the woman is here. But what she did, she confessed to Jesus Christ, right? Yes. And in James says, if you look at here, in James 2, 10 and 11 says, Whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumble as just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Okay? If you know all the laws, if you are doing everything and you just do one, you break the laws. Amen? This is what the scripture says. For he who said, you will not commit adultery, also said, you will not, you will, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become lawmaker. What is that wants us to know here? You might not be that woman, but if you do, if you are in that situation, sinning, addictions, whatever you are doing, taking the time of your, of your appointed time to Jesus Christ, brother, Give that back to Jesus Christ. Repent. Open your heart to receive your Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's continue. First John 5, 17 says, All wrongdoings is sin. There is nothing one in everything we do against Jesus Christ is right. Anything that we do against Jesus Christ is sin. Okay? So that woman is a sinner. Amen? It's fear. Let's continue. But, what is the good news here? First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we will confess our sin, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sin, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. What a promise. Do you feel how love God love you now? Yes. Whoever you are, no matter what sin you have done in your life, it says in the Bible, it even says how, how much, as far as the sins, the west, the west. Yes? Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, if you think you are the most sinner in this world, don't worry. God says, come back to me. Amen. I will forget your sin. And not only forgetting your sin, I will forgive you. Yes? And I will make you righteous. Amen. Let's continue. Second point in the application, decide to have that living water in you and receive it. Decide to receive it. When you desire it, you have to decide. Amen? Amen. When you desire, right now, you might be believing that I need that water. I desire it, but Father. I desire it, God. But you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision to receive it. John 7.37 says, on the last or greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said to the loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. 38. Whoever believes in me, as scriptures have said, river of living water will flow from within. Whoever believes. Imagine. Take note of that, brother. We have to do something, right? Yes, it is free, but we have to do something. 39 says, By this he meant the Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the living water. 
Amen? And if we go back to what we have read earlier, whatever you need. Do you need salvation? Do you need the Holy Spirit? Whatever you need. That is the living water that God is ready to give it to you today. Amen? Amen. He said, by that means, the Spirit whom those who believe in Him were later to receive. Hallelujah. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus has not yet been glorified. It says here, I would like to emphasize here, this was the time when Jesus Christ not yet uh, uh, descended, ascended to, to uh, the heaven, right? It says, that whom those who believe in Him were later received. Amen. Do we believe Jesus Christ? Yes. Amen. Then we will receive the living water. Romans 8, 9 says, But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. When you have that spirit with you, when you have that living water with you, you no longer be controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit. If you have that spirit of living and of spirit of God living in you, remember that those who do not have the spirit in Christ living in them, do not belong to Him at all. Amen. Amen. So if you don't have that spirit, brother, check, check. Day twice. Better not to spend much of your time. If you think you don't have that spirit, don't waste much of your time. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. The last point is, be, testimony, be a testimony of God's gift as a living water. Be a testimony of God. Your life. That transfer life. When you receive that living water in you, that living, that Holy Spirit in you, your life will go into transform. Amen? Amen. I am in front of you, testifying the goodness of God. From part time of uh, liquor, now sharing the word of God. I remember, if you might just, please allow me a little bit of that. I remember one time when we visited our, our sister when here before, after, I think it was after three years from the time we stopped doing the ceiling liquor, we come back here to visit them, to pray over the family, yeah? When we were driving through, we see all the changes because that that uh, area, exit 119 was not like that before. And it was improved so much and me and my husband was in the car and I was telling him how God is so faithful, how God is so great. Can you, can you imagine this? When we were going here before, three years ago, we are passing by to this place, we are passing by to this area to buy liquor, to sell outside. Now we are going to pass by to this place to share the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the testimony of life. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Okay? So John, John 5, 28, 30, and 39, and 42. John 4, chapter 4, 28, 30, 39, and 42. Just, just read it. I will just read it for you fast, and you can read it again in, in, in your house. It says, The woman left the water jar beside the well and ran back to the village. This is what I was telling earlier, that the women do the testimony, what God did in her life. What they told to the people? This guy told me everything about me. Whatever that is. My sin, my everything. And after knowing that, she repented and she repented when she received the living water that Holy Spirit she experienced and that is the reason why she is able to stand before the God before Jesus Christ saying that He is the Messiah Hallelujah Let's continue Act 1 verse 8 says But you shall receive the power you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has been upon you and you shall be the witness to me in Jerusalem and all Judea in Samaria, Samaria in the end of the earth. Yes. This is exactly what I'm trying to tell you. Once you have that living water in you, once your life transforms, brother, you are not going to stay there in that seat. You will go and testify the goodness of God. Amen. Because you will experience it in your life. Amen. 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 Let's continue. We are now, oh wow, we are done. We are now in summary. Just let me give you the summary. So these are the summaries. The significant point of God's gift in us is, it is a gift, it is a free, as I've said, and it is a living water, the Holy Spirit, the salvation, the knowledge of God, amen, the living water that will never thirst you again, but give you satisfaction, that will fulfill you, and number four, it becomes a first bumbling spring within you, you will be a testifier of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. 
Sooner I will see a lot of testifier in this place. Why should we see it today? Conclusion, living water will lead us to the eternal life. Hallelujah. So when you have that living water in you, it will not stay there. But it will give you, it will bring you to the eternal life. Romans 8, 11 says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The Spirit of God. That Spirit who has brought Jesus Christ from the dead, it is going to be in us. Or it is in us right now, it says. Amen? Amen. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give you he will give you life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. That Spirit, God gave it to Jesus Christ. It's the, the gift that Jesus Christ wants to give it to you today. Amen. 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 So, before we go for our prayer and ask a conclusion, allow me to ask this question, brother and sister. What drink, what water do you have right now? I don't know what water do you have right now that is between you and God. But if you are still in that water, but doesn't give you satisfaction, if you are still in that water that never satisfies you, Jesus Christ is telling you today, brother, He is offering you the gift through His Son, Jesus Christ. The living water that will never make you thirsty again. That will never make you desire of what you want, what you need. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That living water will give you peace, joy, love, and happiness. Amen. No matter what your situation is. Right? Amen. If you desire to receive this living water, but if you think there is something still in you, this is the day God tells you, come back to me. I am here. Repent. I'll give you that living water. Hallelujah. Today is the day, brother. If you desire, make a decision. Okay? Open your heart. Not to me. Not to the church. To God. Hallelujah. Accept Him as your God, your Lord, your Savior of your life. And that gift will go into me in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we stand up. No. Today, brother and sister, it's not an accident why you are here. If you think you still need the living water in you, but if you think that there is something in you stopping you from receiving in that living water, this is the day God says, repent, come back to me. Talk to your Jesus. Talk to your God today. Ask forgiveness. Desire and make a decision to receive the living water. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Now is the day. Brother and sister, pray to God. Repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God in heaven, we thank you. We give you glory. We bless your holy name today, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, Woo! that today is the day, oh God, that you open the gift from heaven through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the living water, oh God, that you have given to us free, oh Lord God. Right at this moment, Lord, see us through, oh Lord God. See your children, oh Lord God. Lord, I believe in my heart that no one's no, no one's don't want to receive this living water, but everyone wants to have this, Lord God. And Lord, if there is anything in our heart right now, Lord, to stop us from receiving this water, oh God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, oh Lord God, have mercy on us, oh Lord God. Forgive us our sins, oh God. Forgive us of what we have done wrong to you, Jesus Christ. That departed our life through you, Jesus Christ. Right at this moment, oh God, 
We confess before you, God. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord, from our unrighteousness, O God. That we may be worthy, O God. That we may be cleansed before you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace, Lord, even if we don't deserve the living water, O God. But because your grace is so much for us, O Lord God, we are here right now, O God. Lord, we would like to receive that living water, O God. We open our heart, we make a decision, O Lord God, to receive it. In the name of Jesus right now, we receive it, Lord God. Brother, receive it. Talk to your God. It is not me, but it is you in you. Desire it for that you may have the living water in you. Lord, maraming salamat. We thank you for the living water that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ, freely. Right at this moment, Lord God, we receive it, O Lord God. We'll fulfill in our heart, in our mind, in our spirit, O Lord God. And from today, O Lord, we declare and we decree, O God, that we will continue to make you our Lord, our God, and Savior of our life, O Lord God. Lord, that we may be able to continue experience the living water in our life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for everything, O Lord God. Thank you for the living water that is in us right now, O Lord God. We declare and we decree, O Lord God, blessings be upon us, O Lord God. That we may be able, O Lord God, to run without having thirst again. That we may be able to be testifier of your goodness in our life, O Lord God. We will be your test living testimony, O Lord God, in this world, O God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We receive all of the blessings. We receive the living water, O Lord God. We see all of our all of prayer, Lord God, with your blood, with your Son, Jesus Christ, blood, O Lord God. We rebuke all the works of the enemies, Lord, that will stop us from receiving this from today, O Lord God. We commit our life unto you, Jesus. We seal it by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it, brother, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the living water, O Lord God. We give you praise, we give you glory, Lord. All the highest praise and adorations belong to you, Jesus. And this all 